Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the bonus episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. That's right. It's bonus time. Our very first bonus episode of the year 2020. And you know what an interesting date this is when this comes out. 022020. And I guess you could throw another 20 on that, huh? <laughs> what an interesting date. And I think that's appropriate for today's book, which you could call it really interesting. <laughs> yeah, we've got a return guest, Lucas Milliron, uh, coming back to us today with his latest book. Uh, <laughs> well, you saw the name uh, on the title. And so I'm going to save that for later. But, uh, yeah, you could certainly call that interesting. But I do know that you're wondering what in the world that's about. And you're going to find out about that, why that name, and uh, more, including a reading from the book coming up here in just a few short moments. So stay tuned. First, I want to invite you all to come and follow us on social media. We are on Facebook and Twitter as the Sample Chapter Podcast. Easy to find We're the only one like us by that name. So easy to find and follow on social media. I also, whatever your preferred podcast platform that you like to listen to, be that Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or just going to the websites themselves, or maybe you like to follow the show on YouTube because that's a growing community we have over there. Wherever you're finding and following this show, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And uh, that helps helps us grow. I, I really appreciate when you find a book that you enjoy and you share that with your friends saying, hey, check out this book. Uh, I have a feeling today will be one of those episodes that people are going to be sharing, going like, what the heck is this? So we'll see what happens. And if you want to reach out to me, I am at samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. Drop me a line, let me know what you think of the show, or if you're an author and you'd like to come on, or if you have a friend that you want to refer uh, for me to reach out to. By all means, let me know, and I'll be I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Well, look, uh, before we get things rolling, I want to send out a very special greeting to all my wonderful listeners all over the world. We're currently downloaded and listened to regularly now in over 50 countries. Uh, something that just blows my mind, something that I am just amazed by to log in and look at my stats and to find you know all these incredible countries all over the world that are listening in and finding books that they enjoy. I am very humbled and uh, very, very grateful to all of you. Uh, I've named off several in the past. I enjoy doing this and uh, I like giving you shout outs. So this week I want to name in particular... New friends in Egypt, Kenya, Thailand, and Venezuela. Now, that doesn't lessen my appreciation to any of the other countries out there, but these are just some of the latest ones that have been popping up, listening to the show, and downloading. And my heart goes out to all of you. I really appreciate you. i give you a virtual hug right here through the microphone. (laughs) And very humbly from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all. You're incredible, and uh, I'm so happy that you enjoy the show. Well, speaking of thanks, let me thank our sponsors, starting with YouStoreAll, who's been with us from the very beginning, more than two years now. They are the premier self-storage facility in the Warrensburg area. They have two facilities, both fully fenced in and gated. You'll have your own private gate code. It's well lit all night long with LED, bright LED lighting. And they have more than 60 cameras recording 24 hours a day, so you know your goods are going to be secure. They also feature climate control and non-climate control. And when I say climate control, I mean air conditioned, heated, and dehumidification. So you know that your goods being stored there are going to be just as safe as within your own home. Hey, check them out online at ustoreall.net. That's spelled the letter U-S-T-O-R-A-L-L dot net. I also want to thank my favorite writing software, Scrivener. They've also been a longtime sponsor of the show, over a year now, and I just love it. I use this software every day 
You heard me talking about it last week with Michael Laron. Uh, he and I are both big fans of it, and we both use uh, both of their options, the, the desktop versions and the uh, mobile, which is incredible. I just I love being able to open up my phone or now my iPad and being able to write wherever I am and uh, get in there and start on my story, and then I can pick it up later on when I get home again. It's incredible. I love this software. You're going to love it too. It's made for writers by writers. Stay tuned for an ad from them and find out how you can save yourself 20%. Of course, I also want to thank my friends over at Pop Goes the Culture Network. Uh, They share every episode of not just my own show, but many other pop culture shows that (laughs) they don't really have anything to do with writing per se, uh, but it's pop culture. So you get you know, you get some uh, some of the old fun books. You know, maybe somebody's going to talk about Peter Benchley and Jaws. Or they've got uh, graphic novels like The Watchmen. Uh, you know, they talk about all of that and so much more. And of course, you know, when it comes to pop culture, you can't not talk about the movies. And, you know, there's a lot of old pop culture movies that inspire writing today. I know it inspires me. So I love listening to so many of their shows, including their flagship show, Pop Goes the Culture Podcast, hosted by network owner Joey Mills. And it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy all of the shows over there at Pop Goes the Culture. So click the links in the show notes and you can find out more for yourself. So today's guest of the bonus episode, Lucas Milliron. <laughs> You know, I it, this is just one of those where, uh, I'll be honest, uh, so whenever he first reached out to me about this book, you know, the title grabs you, to say the least, and I when, just right off the bat, I was like, I don't think so, man, I don't think this is going to work, and, uh, you know, he understood, but then he reached out to me again a little bit later and said, you know, you know explaining a little bit about it and uh, what he's got going on with it and what he's trying to do, and and so I, you know, I, I looked into it some more and listened to him on another podcast, which was uh, really insightful. And I tell you, you know, and I tell you what, I, I appreciate that you're here listening to my podcast, but I think you should also check out Lucas on Matters of Faith podcast with Jay Wilburn. I heard that, and that was also one of the episodes that convinced me that you know what, I should probably look into this and. Let's give it a chance. And I think at the heart, that's what uh, Lucas is trying to do. Because uh, with this book, he's exploring themes outside his comfort zone. Themes he's never touched on before. You know, outside of things of his own personality. Uh, while writing not just this book, but a, another upcoming book. He's had several psychological trips into the story. You know, really going there as the author to be able to write an experience that means something. And... That was a that was that's an incredible thing that we do talk about in this episode. But we also talk about the evolution of hilarious vulgarity. Uh, where do you put the gross? <laughs> it's important as an author to know if there was something gross, it went in the right place, and was it necessary? Was it not? So I thought that was uh, that was really interesting and, and informative. And I want to warn you too that once this gets going and you're listening to the interview, I, I would suggest not to have anything to drink if you do have a drink set it down don't pick it up for the next 30 to 40 minutes while this is going on because you hear me choking at one point uh going to take a sip while he was talking and you know how can you not laugh at some of this stuff i mean the the name of the book alone generates a uh maybe a roll of the eye maybe a little uh pull at the corner of your cheek you know you're starting to grin a little bit or it's going to make you laugh out loud. One way or the other, the name alone invokes a reaction. But listening to him describe things and his reasonings behind this and that was just flat out had me cracking up. So it's an adventure to say the least. I think uh, you are in for a really fun time. The chapter reading is his cleanest and nicest chapter that he has in the book. So that's a little forewarning that this is not a full representation of the book. Uh, that being said, he does express his interest in wanting to write a children's book, which, although I encourage him to do so, I think that's a great idea. You know, I think uh, as an author, it's a good idea to explore all sorts of avenues to find 
where your voice is and, and where you can go. But I also agree with our mutual friend, Armand Rosamilia. Don't write this under your name, buddy. Lucas, I beg you, don't do that. <laughs> but when you write a children's book, put it under a pseudonym. So, <laughs> All right, I'm done rambling here. Uh, it's a fun episode. I just ask you to give this episode a chance, give the book a chance. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to check it out for myself. And uh, just like every book, I will be leaving a review once I get a chance to uh, to grab this. I always leave a review, Goodreads, Amazon, and I'm starting to move some things over to BookBub as well. So I suggest you do the same. Uh, whether you pick up this book or not, always leave a review. It's not just for the author. It's for those who are seeking out books, wanting to know what to read. They want to know what the opinion is of those who come before them you know, what they thought of the book. So leave a review. It serves more than just the author. All right. You're going to hear an ad from Scrivener. And then we're going to get over to our interview with Lucas Millarn and his latest book. <laughs> Cocksucker. <laughs> Jason here. Hey, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about my favorite writing tool, Scrivener. Now, I know you've heard about Scrivener because their writing software has been embraced by hundreds of thousands of other writers like you and I, from the novice to best-selling novelists. The reason we all use it is because of Scrivener's core concept to bring all the writing tools you use together in a single application. And with tools like automatic backup, character maps, project goals, and let's not forget that amazing corkboard, you can see why I use Scrivener every day. As a bonus for Sample Chapter Podcast listeners, use code CHAPTER for 20% off your desktop version. Scrivener Writing Software, built by writers for writers. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast. Hey, I've got a great thing going on this year. I've already visited with one previous guest, and we've already got a second one today. Coming back from all the way back on July 3rd, episode 74, Lucas Milliron. He was here with Prismatic Words, uh, that incredible collection of stories, and it uh, it was just, uh, you know, we're just going to have to discuss it again because it was just it, it's too much for me to even try and put into my own words. He may look cute and cuddly, but his writing will get inside your head and give life to unnatural thoughts. Lucas, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you, thank you. And you couldn't be more on the nose. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody saw the uh, the title on the front of this, so that everybody is wondering what mm -hmm. in the world. So, I mean, uh, but you know, I, let's uh, let's let's make everybody wait just a little bit longer. <laughs> Sounds good. <clears throat> uh, I, I like the I like the tease. Yes. <laughs> we'll call this foreplay. There we go. That that's a good idea. I like that. Well, uh, how have you been, man? I've been good. It's been ridiculously busy. A lot's been going on. I mean, I certainly can't complain. Yes, yes. You are the uh, the Paul Bunyan optician of the South. I think it was something like that. Something I mean, like I <laughs> yeah. The tagline has been the bearded optician. Okay, I like it. Well, it sounds like you've been busy all over Florida. Do you, do you go anywhere else, or is it just Florida? So I am licensed optician in the state of Florida. So right now it's strictly just this state. I've contemplated getting my license for other states, but it's kind of it's a little bit more difficult than just saying, "Oh, hey, give me a license." It's you have to take tests and exams and prove that you can make eyeglasses over there. Mm -hmm. So right now I am pretty much strictly uh, Florida-based, and for my particular company, I travel. My range is everywhere as far north as Jacksonville, Florida, and as far south as Miami, and most recently over in Naples. So I am all over the state. Oh, my goodness. So do you ever get to fit in like a book signing or something along with a trip? Not yet. That is something that I'm working on, and that's something that I'm actually planning. Where I've actually found a couple other horror writers, um, Peter Rollick, uh, another gentleman named F.D. Gross, um, and we're going to start doing a – right now the title we're coming up with is 
uh, gruesome brews and books, which <laughs> we're going to go to different uh, kind of an unconventional book signing at breweries mm-hmm. and maybe a couple restaurants or different outdoor places and just find different ways of getting people and to reading. I mean, what more unassuming place than, you know, like a local brewery where people are already getting, you know, socially lubricated with some delicious <laughs> beers and talk about books. I love it. I love it. That's a great idea. And that's one of the things I always preach to to uh, some of my writing friends in this area is to examine your books and see where you could branch out oh, yeah. and, and go and, and sit somewhere like there's. You know, one person with a mystery and there's antique stores in it. Reach out to the Mm. antique store. See if you can come by and and, uh, do a book signing while you're there, you know, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, try and do that. So I've got my books take place in specific places that are real places. And and I'm I'm always reaching out to them and say, hey, can I come on by and and do that? And so far it works out really well. Oh, yeah. I got the idea from a Mr. Armand Rosamilia. Um Never him heard of and oh I know right him and uh, <laughs> him and Chucky Buddha or no Chuck Buddha excuse mm-hmm. me yeah <laughs> um they have what they call uh what is it beers and fears up in New Jersey right and I've been talking to Armand for a couple of years now and I've been kind of getting his feedback on it and I decided to bring that down here now I don't want to steal their thunder and call it you know beers and fears that's totally Armand's baby. So we're still coming up with the title, but right now it sounds like Gruesome Brews and Books. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice, though. I, I like that mm-hmm. idea. And it, and it tells everybody right in the name what to expect. Exactly. Well, speaking of events, so last year you were on here, we were talking about your latest book, Prismatic Words, and that yep. came out. Uh, you had a big event at, uh, was it at uh, Beers and Fruit? Scares the Care. Scares no, it the was Care, Scares right. the Care. How yep. did it go? It went fantastic. Um, it was my first uh, live book reading. Um, I can definitely say that Sample Chapter Podcast was my official first book reading. <sighs> and then the live reading of one of the stories from Prismatic Words called uh, My Friend in the Dark. And it was fantastic. I mean, I love crowds. I love performing and that was basically just how I looked at it, is it's just your character acting. Even though it's your story, these are still your characters. And it's just breathing life and to something that you've had in your head. And it was just fantastic. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I heard that uh, that was quite the uh, the turnout. And uh, I heard from a few people that you did really well, that they were really happy with, uh, with the story and, and the reading. So congratulations, man. Well, Scares That Care has gotten so big that now they're doing it uh, two events. I mean, they just added a Wisconsin event. I'm not sure exactly where because that's a little bit too far out of my wheelhouse. Um, Williamsburg, Virginia is far enough as it is, but Scares keeps growing. It is a amazing charity, and if anybody on listening to this wants to get behind a charity that's big on books and reading and also helps save kids with cancer, kids with full body burns, and women surviving breast cancer, I mean... This is a really awesome charity. Look into it. Absolutely, man. That's awesome. Yeah, that that's one of the events that, and uh, of course, beers and fears, are uh, some events I would love to attend one of these days. Once I uh, once I can get around to it and make some more trips. I know it's it's always just planning and getting there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So since that time, I know you've been working on a lot of of uh, different books. Some are out getting looked over right now Mm -hmm. but uh, of course the reason you're here today was uh, your most recent book that comes out (laughs) february 17th by the time this drops it will have uh, just come out tell us about your latest book so i thought of the idea as well i want to write a story about a little boy who loses his puppy Mm -hmm. and being half mexican I decided, well, what happens if that puppy happened to be a chubacabra? (laughs) And then what if the boy wasn't just a boy? Maybe he was an inbred redneck because who else is going to confuse a chubacabra for a cute and cuddly puppy? There you go. Yeah. 
So that was kind of the opus of it. It was just the idea of, well, what if a little boy happens to befriend a chupacabra and then shenanigans ensue? (laughs) I mean, it is 100% unadulterated, just gross out, gory, and very vulgar. I mean, (laughs) this is probably one of the grossest things I have ever written. This is one of the smuttiest things I have ever written. And I am tickled pink that I found a wonderful home at Grindhouse Press for this book. I mean, (laughs) I submitted it to another publisher called Deadite. And Deadite is very well known in the underground and extreme horror community for publishing some of the grossest fiction on the planet and if anybody is interested in the slightly comedic slightly obscene books i would highly recommend you check out some of their books such as santa steps out it's a wonderful holiday book oh oh my but my particular book um they declined they are currently in the process of revamping restructuring themselves they had an editor that was let go and i think my timing was off because I think right now Deadite is still trying to rediscover who they are now that they're trying to restaff themselves differently. And when they rejected it, I was very concerned because they are the creme de la creme of crazy fucked up fiction. Right. And when they reject your book saying that it's either too weird or too vulgar or too this or too that, (laughs) A little bit of concern went through your mind. A little bit. Part of me was like, well, I guess this one's going to be (laughs) self-published. Not that it's a bad thing, but how do you market something like that? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, especially with a title such as Cocksucker. Right. And a lot of people have asked me why Cocksucker, and you have to read the book. Once you read the book, you will understand that there is no other title that, that will work for this. (laughs) <laughs> and my, my assumptions mm-hmm. uh, well i don't know if i should uh, have any assumptions uh going into it because you, you mm-hmm. never know <laughs> so my my beliefs is that it's a, a definite tie-in uh perhaps yes. it's not so much physically but um mm-hmm. uh, verbally a little bit well the main protagonist um the villain i should say is a bisexual skunk ape named Curious Old Bob. I mean, I should definitely emphasize that this book takes place entirely in Florida. Um, (laughs) Being a native Floridian, I said, there's a lot of Florida man stories out. I wanted to write a Florida man story without a Florida man. I mean, there's a lot of situations and circumstances that I have taken inspiration upon, but for the most part, this is 100% my baby i mean (laughs) this was totally this was all my jam yeah (laughs) oh my gosh so all right so you talked about how you had this idea and it was something that Mm -hmm. you wanted to write but i mean how how does how does it go where you have this one little idea about a little boy evolve into something so outrageous how does that happen well I mean, I knew I wanted the book to take place in Florida, and I wanted it to be a little bit on the – I don't want to keep using the word vulgar, but I wanted it to be obscene in some way Mm -hmm. just because I thought it would be funny. I mean, this is so extreme to the point it's almost comical, (laughs) and that was kind of the threshold I wanted to play with. So I kept going and going, and then I – One idea sprouts off into another. Well, like, okay, well, you can't just have all this crazy redneck incest happening. You need something that makes this, you know, a definitive genre. And my DNA is horror. So I said, well, what's a scary monster in South Florida? Well, skunk apes. I mean, those, I mean, it's very much, my dad uh, was a huge cryptid fan. He loves Bigfoot. I mean, he grew up in northern USA and out in the backwoods, and he has plenty of Bigfoot stories. And, of course, when he moved down, you know, was telling me that, you know, there's Florida's Bigfoot. And it's different because it's a little bit more primal. It's uglier. It smells. It's got this bad odor. And I just remember 
thinking how terrifying it would be to run into one. And then I'm like, well, I have this story. That sounds like the perfect monster if everything's happening in the glades. Oh then, then you tack on this family drama romance with the other main character named uh, Freddy Trujillo. And I wanted something that would be a little bit different because you see a lot of normal romance stories. And I figured, well, how would this dynamic change if we make our protagonist, our, not our protagonist, our, uh, our main character gay? Mm -hmm. So I did. And I found that it added a different element of, I don't want to say sympathy, but you relate to the character differently. And the point of this was I wanted to play it that him being a homosexual is not that big of a deal. He's just a normal person. This is a normal romance, aside from incestuous rednecks and bisexual skunk apes and chicken-killing chubacabras. <laughs> it is also an LGBT romance. There you go. All right. So it is topical. I mean, because, again, I just feel like love is love is love. And why should it matter if the main character is straight or gay? And I think the homosexuality makes this a little bit more interesting because it's a different take on it. We're not focused on the fact that Freddie and Winston are gay. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They're just two people. And it's just a regular relationship that goes slightly awry. And we all have that. And it's all very relatable. It's just not what you're used to seeing. So in the in the midst of the 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 word that we keep coming back to the vulgarity and the um, um, uh, wildness of this, there's also social commentary. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that's. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, it, it's so it's so much fun trying to put a real my own uh, you know very nice commentary onto this as well, but it's. <laughs> I mean, and then I it's, look down at my notes and I see cocksucker. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, it's like take a Bloody Mary. Yeah. But you replace the Tabasco sauce with, you know, Ghost Reaper chilies, and then you sprinkle in some edible glitter. <laughs> that is cocksucker. <laughs> that is uh, that's the visual right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, and it's a unique cover on it as well. Just with, oh yeah, uh, with that rooster, it uh, mm -hmm. it really it draws the eye. It's got the bright colors, and it makes everybody look at that, going, "Am I reading that right?" It's yeah, uh, what yeah, is this? no. And that's kind of, uh, and I love my publisher for this. Um, the the publishing owner, her name C. V. Hunt. Um, she is fantastic to work with. I mean, I've had a lot of feedback, and I was allowed to have certain pushback with the cover. So she designed it, and I immediately said, yes, you get me. You get this book. You know what this book is about. And it's it's just so delightful. I I can't be happier with how the chips fell. I mean, C.D. <laughs> Hunt definitely did a really good job on this cover. Oh, that's great. So all right, so the book comes out February 17th. It's going to be mm -hmm. available. Where, where will it be available? So pre-order is up and ready. Um as of time of the recording, it's going to be available pretty much everywhere books are sold. Um, I'm going wide with this one. Most of my self-published stuff I usually do as a Kindle exclusive or Kindle Unlimited, but with having a publisher behind me on my first officially not self-published book, I want to go broad. So you can get it on any platform. Well, there we go. And we're going to make sure it has some links to that as well in the show notes, mm -hmm. so I can just clip there. So in this process, writing something outside, mm -hmm. and, and not, not just the LGBTQ mm -hmm. items, uh, but also the um, extreme stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Writing in this area, this is I know that a lot of this is new for you. Yes. What have you learned doing this? So I have learned that less is more. But at the same time, more is more. I mean, it's because the next thing I want to tackle, and everybody gives me a side-eye glance when I say this, 
But in the next two years, I also plan on writing a children's book. So this has taught me a lot of what I can't do. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also kind of helped me realize you can be super gross, but you have to know where to put it. Like a lot of the grossest things happen in the in the introduction. If you can make it through the very first sentence, keep reading. If you cannot make it through that first sentence, the book is not for you. Put it down. Put it back. I am okay if you don't buy the book. <laughs> it's <laughs> That is one of the other things I have learned is that it's all about where you do it. I mean, me, I am a fan of heavy metal, and I kind of use all the gore and the grossness like a distortion pedal. You know, you want to apply it just right so that way you're not overdoing it and you're not overkilling it. It's not just saturated with this grossness. I mean, the grossness is just a seasoning. It's like, like again, like cooking with ghost peppers. You want to use it sparingly. You want to use it appropriately. And I'm hoping I got my heat level right. And, and that's what it sounds like, just talking to you, you know, because we've been talking about this. I think you, you had the first idea for this last year mm-hmm. when, we, when we first talked. I believe you were, you mentioned it then. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we've talked a little bit uh, off air about this and chatting back and forth. It sounds like you, you – it's not like you're writing something and just peppering the wall with whatever comes to mind. There's a distinctive story here. Yes. And – yeah, there's some wild things happening, but it's all um, relative to the story, and there's mm-hmm. there's a reason for it, and that's what I find yeah. really interesting. And and it is. I mean, the main thing is that I wanted the grossness and the gore factor to enhance the story. It needs to be there, and as bad as it sounds and as uncomfortable as people will get reading this, by the time you finish it, I want you to look back at it and be like, you know what? If X, Y, and Z didn't happen, I wouldn't feel the way that I do at the end of it. Even if the only thing you feel by the time you're done reading this is that you need a hot shower. It's, you're still feeling something out of it. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a really good way to put it. So if, if you come out of this and you, and everything fit the way it was supposed to be, then, Mm -hmm. yeah, then you've done your job as an author and, uh, entertained somebody. Exactly. I mean, that's all this is. This was a lot of fun to write. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I felt dirty. (laughs) I mean, I still feel a little dirty. I don't think I'll ever get it out from between my fingernails. But you know what? (laughs) It was worth it. It's like playing in the mud. It's not for everybody. (laughs) Uh, So, Lucas, before I let you go, what are you working on? So, right now, I've got my most violent story with uh, a couple publishers. I don't want to say their name on air just yet until contracts are signed. Um, my most violent book is The Dead Heart, which I'm hoping gets greenlit. I've got Away From Home currently with Stitch Smile Press. Um, and then my current project is a book called Still House. It's a ghost story where the ghosts are a metaphor for depression. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and what I—that's <laughs> amazing. You said that. I actually just had a conversation with somebody uh, that I'm close to recently, and we were just dis- we were discussing about the possibility of depression being mm-hmm. the same as demonic possession. In a way, it kind of is. I mean, I don't want to be too biblical in this one because I want to be as broad of an audience as I can. So. I kind of feel like going with ghosts is because there's also so much emotional trauma associated with ghosts. And there's always the question of is a place haunted or is a person haunted? And I'm kind of on the side of it's the person who's haunted, not the place. The place is affected by it, but it's up to the person to be receptive to it. Mm. And how can you be any more receptive than when you're totally in the lowest moment of your life? Yeah. I mean, Still House is a depressing book. It is probably the most depressing thing I've ever written. Um, 
and I had to step away from the project at least three times because of how personal it got. Because the only way I can write something that depressing is if I put 110% of my own self into it. So there's a lot of personal relationship things that have happened, um, specifically with the main character and his sister. Everything else is kind of make up as they go, but their relationship is 100%. Um, I don't want to say it's autobiographical, but the emotional tension is factual. Okay. Yeah. So and it's just like writing any other story. You had to get there oh, emotionally. Yeah. You had to go there to, mm -hmm. get, to get yourself into the characters. And this is yeah. one that touched a, touched a nerve. Easily. And it's... I'm glad that I did it because it definitely it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah, you'll have to let us know when those are ready. Oh, most definitely. Well, where can, uh, where can people find you playing in the mud? So I am on, uh, pretty much all social media platforms. I'm on Instagram at bearded optician. I'm on Instagram at Milliron Lucas. You can find me on Facebook. I mean, just put my name in a Google search, Lucas Milliron, spelled M-I-L-L-I-R-O-N. Lucas is just L-U-C-A-S, and you can find me. Fantastic. Hey, Lucas, I appreciate you coming back on and that, uh, hmm. you know, I, I, and I, I appreciate that you asked me about this because it was something that, uh, and, and I'll be honest, I think uh, we were talking about that. I was hesitant at first, but yes. yeah, mm -hmm. us, us talking about the story, and I hope people listening are going to do the same thing, that they just give it a chance and uh, mm -hmm. see what they think, because I think, uh, like myself, people are going to find themselves surprised. Definitely. I mean, I the chapter I'm reading is chapter three, and this is your first introduction to uh, one of the main characters, Freddy, and... It's going to be a little bit deceiving as to how vulgar the book actually gets. Okay. I mean, this is probably the cleanest chapter as far as, like, what happens to the characters mm -hmm. out of the entire book. I mean, th this is the cleanest part, and you have been warned. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it there, people. You have been warned because we are about to roll in the mud with Lucas Millarn and his latest book, Cocksucker. Keep it in the family. <laughs> Here we go. Chapter 3. Freddy could still taste the bourbon on the man's lips. The world was spinning out of control. How could it be so hot and humid this late at night? He did the only thing that made sense. He took off his sweaty shirt. The older man explored his flesh with his hands and lips. Freddy's nipples hardened, as did the bulge in his pants. His head was filled with adrenaline, along with the smell of booze, sweat, and the stranger's cologne. Freddy closed his eyes while the man's strong hands worked their way around his belt buckle. He could feel his body quiver as the man suckled his earlobe. Freddy fought the urge to moan, to cry out in rapture. He bit his lip, trying to stave off the intensity of the stranger's lust. Freddy? Winston said from behind them. Fuck! Freddy opened his eyes. His heart dropped, sobriety tight on its heels. Freddy didn't know how long he'd been watching, but it was long enough. Winston saw the silver-haired gentleman in the white button-up shirt and cream-colored skinny jeans with his hand in his boyfriend's pants. Not all the air in the world could quench his lungs' thirst. Freddy squeezed his eyes shut, tears spilling across his cheeks. Stop, he said softly to the silver fox. Please. The man did as Freddy asked, rubbing his nose and straightening a few stray hairs with his palm. He found his composure. As he stepped out of the alleyway, he glanced at Winston as he walked by. Winston crossed his arms and looked back at Freddy, who'd slumped on the ground against the brick wall by the dumpster. Freddy looked up at him. Winston was a marathon runner with dark umber skin, as soft as purple calla lilies. He was sweating, beads dripping from his nose like fresh dew. Winston looked down at Freddy. He wasn't the best-looking man, but when he cleaned up, he looked like a solid eight. Winston didn't mind his chunky belly, but in the darkness of the alleyway, 
the way the sweat glistened off his rolls looked slobbish and downright disgusting. You son of a bitch, Winston said, his eyes red and voice thick. I'm sorry, Freddy sniffled. You just fucking proposed to me. And you said no. I said I wasn't ready. Clearly you weren't either. Winston, please, I love you. I really do. Then what the fuck was that? That man, that fucking stranger, had his hand in your goddamn pants. I'm drunk. Lame excuse. Don't go. I want to get through this. I want us to work this out. How can I? I'm so sorry. Winston was out of things to say. He turned around and left Freddy in the alley. His mind raced, struggling to find something else to think about. The image of his lover kissing another man with his hands around his genitals was burned in his head. Luckily for Winston, Key West was full of places he could go to forget. Fantasy Fest was in full swing. The streets were lined with purple flags, purple triangles, drag queens, and all manner of colorful queer folk. The night was swimming with music, booze, and glitter. People were brightly colored leotards, clear high heels with LEDs, or nothing but a thin layer of paint. It was the best night of their lives come to the worst ending imaginable. Freddie and Winston both wondered how things could get any worse. Winston bumped into Jennifer and Dean at the Rum Runner. The small bedroom-sized bar was cramped enough as it was, but with Freddie's sister and her boyfriend necking, it felt even tighter. As soon as he saw them, he turned around to leave. Jennifer was a personal trainer, and her curvaceous figure could bring scores of men to their knees. Freddie was always joking she'd gotten her mother's Hispanic booty and their father's flat chest. That was until her first boob job. Her boyfriend, Dean, was a swarthy man. Though he'd been born with a silver spoon in his mouth, he kept himself in rugged shape with his CrossFit company. The flowering green dress Jennifer wore allowed for easy access to her more intimate areas, while Dean's attire only suited to accentuate his strong physique. Hey there, Jennifer laughed. What are you guys up to? Where's Freddy? You might want to look in the back alley, Winston said, still making his way out of the bar. What's wrong? Jennifer quickly got up. Jen, Dean exclaimed, falling as he went to lean on her, and she wasn't there. Winston was already halfway down the road by the time Jennifer caught up with him. What's going on? I can't do this, Winston tried to explain, but sadness swallowed his words. Oh, come here, Jennifer pulled him close to her hugging him as he sobbed loudly in her chest. What's going on? Dean said as he finally reached them. I don't know. Jen shrugged her shoulders and asked Winston, Did you guys have a fight? Sort of, Winston tried to compose himself. Freddy, he proposed to me. Oh my God. Jen covered her mouth in surprise. What did you say? It's too soon. We've only been dating for six months. I know I'm his first boyfriend, but it's too soon. How'd he take it? Bad enough to find himself an older man. He did what? Jen's Latina switch flipped. Where is he? Winston walked him around the corner. Freddy was right where he left him. Vomit covered his naked chest and unbuckled pants. He was crying, almost hysterical as he coughed, trying to catch his breath. Puto! Jennifer shouted. What the fuck is wrong with you? Jennifer pulled off her flip-flop and began wailing on her younger brother. I'm sorry! Freddy cried, shielding his face with his arms as best as his drunken muscles could. You bring this man on your family vacation? She spat in rapid-fire aggression. You propose to him, and just because you don't like the answer, you go fucking cheating on him? Bendejo, don't you hold your hands up at me. Honey, Dean said, grabbing her arm. Let's not make a scene. This is stupid. I shouldn't have cheated then. He's your brother. He's a stupid ass. We still have the whole vacation ahead of us. Leave him. He doesn't deserve it. We already paid for the trip. We've got a hotel accommodations, a rental car, and plane tickets. He's your brother, for God's sakes. He ain't my brother. Our ma never raised us this way. I don't know where he got this shit from. Sweetheart, please stop yelling for five seconds. You think I'm yelling? You think this is yelling? Oh, I'm going to show you. Puto pinche, get the fuck up. We're taking you to the airport and flying your ass back to California. And we ain't got no time for showers, neither. Stop, Winston shouted. Stop, please. This isn't what I wanted. Look, he's a shithead, but I don't want to ruin this vacation for everyone else. I can pay for my own flight back. Will everyone calm the hell down? Dean yelled. Listen, 
We've paid for this road trip months ago. There's a campsite we're going to just north of Miami. Let's make it that far, and we'll discuss it from there. I think everyone's a little frustrated, a little drunk, and we need to sober up. Let's at least have a day or two before we make any decisions. Okay, Freddy said, still crying on the floor. Okay, Dean said, letting go of Jen's arm. Fine, she sneered. Dean gave Winston a stern look. Sure. Winston nodded his head. All right, then, Dean said, sighing with relief. Let's get your brother to the motel. Get him showered and into bed. The hangover he's going to wake up with is punishment enough. And put your shoe back on. And that was Lucas Milliron reading a sample chapter from his latest book, Cocksucker. A name I never thought I would say on this show. But there it is. Click the link in the show notes for more about Lucas and this book. Don't forget to also click the link for our sponsors and friends alike. And uh, of course, please hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this show so you don't miss out next time when we come back with a new author, a new book, and a new sample chapter. I'm going to go take a shower. Catch you guys later. (laughs) 